is I'm not a monster. It looks like a uh, looks like it has true retro sci-fi visuals. They use human bodies as an incubator for reproduction. Okay then. Monsters usually attack from around the corner or by impersonating a human. Howdy, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to Not Reviewing Games. What? I mean, uh, well, nope, uh, sorry, wrong channel. Uh, thank you for tuning in for the second episode of Random Game Reviews. Today, we'll be taking a look at a game called I'm Not a Monster. My name's Tasty, and what we do here on this channel is uh, I'll be playing a little bit of the game uh, to kind of get a feel of it, what it's uh, kind of like, and then we'll have a small discussion over whether I would continue playing this game or not after uh, done playing the game. So let's go ahead and jump on in to I'm Not a Monster. Alright guys, here is I'm Not a Monster. It looks like, a, uh, looks like it has true retro sci-fi visuals it's a turn-based strategy uh, turn-based tactics with a lot of twist um it seems pretty pretty fun uh like the look of it so far so let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial and uh let's see It looks like a uh, more of a online type of game where you play other players and stuff. But it's got a small tutorial, so we'll check this out for today's today's review edition thing. of Monsters from Outer Space. It's called How to Survive If I Your Tourist this. Liner Is Attacked by Monsters like from the Depth and I want of more Space. Of it. In which we'll tell you about basic survival rules in the event of a cosmic disaster. Alright, so so far the beginning is. A space is tourist first rule cool. is first save yourself, then help others. It's set up like 1950s or 1940s, uh, like Flash Gordon or something along those lines. I like it. Part 1 Heroism for Beginners. Staring in the lead role is Frank, an experienced space tourist. He's gotten himself out of all sorts of cosmic binds and has a lot to learn. Unlike many other passengers, he doesn't panic in emergency situations and is able to fight alien invaders. Frank knows for sure that if you smell trouble, get down. When you're out in the open, you take much more damage than when hiding behind a crate, for example. That's where he is going to run to. So he's just gonna run behind this is a turn-based game and all players act simultaneously each turn consists of two parts planning and action uh, by sending Frank behind the crate you planned a movement um, your first and only action of this turn click the finish planning button to perform the action the planned action all right so liking it so far I like the visuals how it's kind of like got this grain granular texture like an old school video or something here and I'm liking how everything's looking and Frank I mean look at this guy down here he looks awesome for example short distance move uses one action slot cells within the area or closer to the character and are outlined in green from this new position Frank notices another spot of cover which he let's run run Frank run Frank, run! A long distance move will require two action slots. Uh, cells within this area are uh, located further from the character and outlined with white and orange. Oh, okay. Like a little checker. Frank notices more cover some distance away. He can run there if he goes all out. We're going all out. Run! Frank notices an emergency supply safe. Don't forget to explore it. You can find weapons and devices that will save your life. Now Frank realizes where he was being drawn to all this time. 
It was the emergency safe. It would be foolish to stray from the path <laughs> at the last moment. Okay, so I guess if you click somewhere else, you get that message. I accidentally clicked behind this thing, and it told me he's drawn to the <laughs> safe, safe itself. Okay. Great so news! See. This safe contains a weapon. Frank takes it first. Now that you are armed, think about how to further increase your chances of survival. I wonder how I do that, Mr. Narrator, by pressing that first aid kit. A portable robo dock, no bigger than a car emergency kit, is an excellent addition to any weapon. I like it. Yes, it is. Now Frank is ready to face the enemy. Ooh, last light. Last light! I always and here it him. is. One of the crew turned out to be a monster pretending to be a human. <laughs> This is the Emerald Varanus of Carax, one of the most dangerous creatures from the nearby galaxies. It can impersonate any human by creating a mass hallucination. Emerald Varanus. Varanus from Carax. Be careful. Any passenger or crew member you meet may not be who they pretend to be. The Emerald Varanus is very insidious and can impersonate a human for many years. So does that mean that all the people are pretending? But in this case, the monster has somebody? made a mistake and is seriously outnumbered. What's more, Frank is armed. Alright, so... Plan of shots, select a weapon, and What could be easier target. than aiming your weapon at a space Smart monster pistol. and pressing the release button? A shot from a pistol uses one action shot and means uh, the remaining slot can be spent on moving. It would be better to change... Yeah, yeah, I get it. You want me to move as I shoot. Shoot him! Get him, Frank! over for details from major events. Looks like he Frank used smart pistol. Medium powered pistol shoots smart bullets. Monster down 80. But Donald used the Terminator cannon. His homing projectiles can hit almost any target. As we can see, teamwork can defeat any monster, but it and managed to injure our hero at the last hill. moment. It hurts everybody. What's wrong with this lady? It's time for the wonderful first aid kit. This portable RoboDoc can administer an anesthetic injection, sew up wounds, and even perform minor surgery. So Frank has now activated the... Go ahead and do that. We know what you want me to do, Mr. Narrator. Oh, look at Jan. Look at Jan. Part 2, Saving Civilians. It seems that nothing is threatening Frank's life anymore. It's time to save the others. There are a lot of frightened civilians on board. You should take at least half of them to a safe place. Ooh, nice. To win, you must save at least seven civilians and avoid uh, serious losses. Uh, monsters have uh, the opposite goal uh, to kill or infect as many humans as possible. From his position, Frank notices Miss Jane. She panics, oh, Jane. and Frank rushes to her to take her to a safe place. Hmm, <laughs> but Frank does. I like to take Jane to a safe place myself. Finish planning. Alrighty, let's see here. Jane notices Frank and is ready to follow her saver anywhere. <laughs> Frank just needs to give her a helping hand. I like this guy's accent and how he's saying stuff. If you're near civilians, you can order them to follow you. To do this, click the follow button. Taking Jane by the hand, Frank rushes to the entrance, to a safe place. I wonder what it says if I click anywhere else. There's only one safe place for civilians on this ship. The exit. Alright, I guess I'll click the exit. 
Oh yeah, Jane. Get to safety so we can meet As a later. token of gratitude, Jane gives Frank a rare weapon she never dared to use herself. No wonder she's hiding. <coughs> oh, that was a tiny one. Tiny burp. Uh, yes please. Having saved a civilian's life and received a reward, Frank is ooh, feeling moral ooh, satisfaction and a surge of cancer. energy that allows him to excel. In addition to wear rare items, the character who saved the civilian gets a surge of energy and can run much further during this turn. But it's too early to relax. Many people still need Frank's help. Let's see who needs Frank's help. Frank to the rescue! I'm Frank, I'm Frank, I'm Frank, Frank, Frank. Advanced heroism. We always admire heroes for their courage and morality, but ingenuity is very important as well. When attacking monsters and saving people, heroes experience a moral surge which can give them the most unusual ideas. So Frank's idea was to connect the first aid kit to the X-Radiator, so that the weapon emits waves that accelerate regeneration. Alrighty. So Frank, this big old smart brain, is not going to be healing people from afar. Let's go ahead and use what Frank taught us. All hell the Frank. Morale and ingenuity may be the most powerful weapons against monsters. But there's another side to humanity. Like all people, heroes can make mistakes. Frank is going to shoot Ellen. Oh, Ellen didn't Ellen. shoot the monster, and Frank suspects him to be one of the aliens That's impersonating right. a human. You gotta be an alien, Alan. And here's the price of his mistake. Ooh. Once he realizes that he hurt a human, Frank's morale dips. <laughs> well, I guess I just shot a person. Ooh. Surprise, Yawn. Morale is energy for. Heroic abilities. Heroes lose it for shooting at other civilians or heroes. In addition, Frank is feeling guilty now. It will be hard for him to come up with any creative ideas for a while. Guilt slows the growth of mor morale after good deeds. This is the price for humanity. Our program wouldn't be complete if we only mentioned our space heroes' victories without telling the sad stories. I wonder. No, Sometimes this heroes die, racist thing and monsters like that, are not the only thing. cause. But it, was this game made by people in Russia? Kind of sounds like the narrator's got a Russian accent, or you know, somewhere in Europe. Either or, whoever. Put this thing together. Top notch. I'm liking the graphics. Reminds me of like Fallout in a way. It is in moments like this when a frightened civilian must pull himself together and assume like the, the one, heavy mantle of a hero. Three or four or seventy six, but just the regular first Fallout. Almost like that. But with a little more character, I feel like. Uh, the player whose character is dead takes control of a non-infected uh, civilian, if any are available. Xenopho Xenobiology 101, part 4. But we have saved the most dangerous aspects of the monsters until the end. Ooh. This is the monster's ability to infect unsuspecting people. They use human bodies as an incubator for reproduction. Okay then. Monsters usually attack from around the corner, or by impersonating a human. First, the monster strangles the victim with its tail. <laughs> okay. 
And when the helpless and almost choked person tries to take a deep breath, the monster weakens its grip and spits out eggs into the victim's mouth. <laughs> okay. That's, uh... <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So he choked her out and then spit eggs down her throat. Uh, Within just a couple of minutes, one of the eggs develops into an adult and absorbs the body from inside. Sexual harassy. If you fail to cure an infection in five turns, your character will be uh, taken over by alien DNA and become an emerald vagus. Vernus. Anus? Anus? The heinous because the anus. Uh, two. All right. There are so. two ways to prevent this. Find the xenophage injector, which can remove the infection, or kill yourself. <laughs> but let's see what I happens like that, if you don't uh, stop the infection. Killing yourself is an option. I guess if you can't find a thing, it's better to kill yourself and get a new human than to infect more humans. Let's see. Oh, Modern TV this? technologies can show us oh, how the Carex Veronus like perceives like, hey, our reality. With my tail. These creatures are connected by a mental network that allows them to see through the eyes of each other. And to sense the infected at a distance. Ooh, Margie, you bitch, I knew you were infected. I almost got Frank killed. I was gonna take you out to dinner. Infected civilians are the key oh, wait, to the monster's anyway. survival. After Aye. that, the monsters can be reborn inside any of them. The monsters can even sense potential victims through walls. But in order yeah. to affect a victim, the bitch. monster must first abandon its human disguise. I like her outfit. I like the green little outfit. And I like Patricia's outfit too. It's like an old school... Uh... Uh... Flash Gordon, like this whole game just reminds me of something like straight out of an old uh, 1940s like uh, sci-fi comic book or something. Alright, uh, Ben in your disguise does not use up action slots and allows you to infect. So we want to abandon disguise and then infect Miss Green Suit Lady. Didn't see your name, so. Monster! It's better to do this far away from other humans. If the monster is fired upon during infection, the process oh, won't be crap. finished. I think Roger Ann's gonna kill us. If the monster takes damage during this time, the infection won't be complete. Let's continue infection. Pew! Well, stop that infection. It's like the most polite like drop ever however the monster will still have a second chance when a monster dies the mental network receives a signal that speeds up the transformation of one of the infected monsters will be reborn as long as they are infected civilians heroes and monsters are always human players civilians are npcs and infections affect civilians and heroes in different ways an infected hero uh, has five turns to heal themselves otherwise to become a monster while an infected hu uh, civilian uh, becomes a monster when one of the monsters die and so ends today's edition of monsters from outer space but our story about cosmic monsters is just beginning Okay. It looks like the tutorial's done. In the next episode, you will learn about brain parasites from Uranus, werewolves from Arcturus 7, guests from another dimension, and other monsters from outer space. See you next time. Alright. Well, that was the tutorial for I'm Not a Monster. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. It's a game that I could see myself going back to and uh, playing quite often, actually. 
No, I'm not a monster. Uh, it was a pretty fun game. I played a little bit more after I, I got done recording there, and I did have a, a lot of fun playing the tutorial and learning a little bit about the game. And and, and playing, uh, you know, by itself online, um, you know, against other people and stuff, was a little challenging at first, but once you get into a nice rhythm with it, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of, you know, go through it. I mean, pretty much like any game there, one played a little bit longer. And... You're going to get used to the mechanics, and it's going to become a lot easier for you to do. Uh, with that said, I did thoroughly enjoy the graphics of the game. I love the looks of it. The The audio was uh, right on point with you know an old sci-fi movie from the 1950s or 40s here. <clears throat> and I thought, uh, you know, it, the actual, like, story or, like, some of the, like, not so much story, but the, you know, what went into the voice acting and the writing and that kind of stuff it was fairly ingenious like it it hit its point it didn't really need to give you a whole lot into it uh in order to you know play the game and have fun with it uh, i would recommend this game for anybody that is looking for you know a, just a casual type play of game with turn-based strategy and likes old school kind of uh, nostalgia based things now with that said uh, we gotta give this thing a rating and that rating is going to be based on cookies today uh, we're going to give it four full cookies and one with a bite taken out of it because the game's really good and it does feel somewhat polished but it could you know, have a little bit more on the actual like graphics maybe bring them out a little bit there you know, maybe some more uh, vibrant colors to you know go with it but i did thoroughly enjoy what they did with the, like the old school uh, like nostalgia look where it kind of looked like it was being ran through an old uh, you know eight millimeter film or something along those lines but with with all this uh you know said and done here it does look like that <clears throat> I'm going to go back to playing this game a little bit more after done making this video and everything. And if you did like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know what you guys thought about everything down in the comments below. And for anything else random, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Tasties out!